In this video, we present our work on the emergence of whole body strategies from humanoid push recovery learning, appearing in IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters 2021 and IEEE Humanoids 2020. We apply deep reinforcement learning for training a humanoid push recovery policy to counteract external forces and maintain balance, as shown in the video. Our method targets high-dimensional whole-body humanoid control and is validated on the high-cap humanoid robot in simulation. We show that a single policy can learn several push recovery strategies spanning the entire body. We validate our method with extensive quantitative analysis, including out-of-sample tasks which demonstrate policy robustness and generalization. We start with an introduction about humanoid push recovery and an overview of our approach. Balancing and push recovery are essential abilities for humanoid robots. They are necessary to support virtually any high-level task humanoids aim to execute. In particular, humanoids deployed to unstructured and a priori unknown environments are expected to maintain balance robustly and be able to generalize across environments and the range of external perturbations. Exhibiting natural motion and configurations is also a desirable characteristic. Most state-of-the-art humanoid push recovery methods are rooted in control theory, which strongly contributed to performance improvements in recent years. However, they also present several limitations, which we aim to address with our work. First of all, traditional controllers usually encode a single strategy, for instance, stepping or tipping. Counteracting a wide range of perturbations requires designing multiple controllers and complex switching rules between them. Secondly, in general, tuning the controllers and switching system is an expensive process, which is often performed manually, and it is specific to the robot and task at hand. Also, the use of simplified models, like for instance the 3D inverted pendulum, and hard-coded strategies can constrain behaviors and overall achievable performance. Finally, MPC-based methods in particular are computationally expensive, limiting real-time deployment. Our proposed approach is to employ model-free deep reinforcement learning for high-dimensional humanoid balancing and push recovery. We show that robust momentum-based push recovery behaviors can emerge from learning, in addition to ankle, hip, and stepping strategies, all within a single neural network control policy. We demonstrate that deep reinforcement learning can be successful even with the challenging dimensionality of the action space with respect to previous work, namely 23 degrees of freedom distributed in the entire body of the ICAB humanoid robot. We define a parsimonious observation space inspired by floating-based dynamics, still capturing the necessary information for solving the task. We design reward components to guide learning towards steady-state balancing with transient push recovery strategies. We also show that enhanced robustness can be achieved by introducing randomization of multiple physical quantities during training. Finally, we provide an extensive experimental validation of the policy's performances and generalization in simulation. We designed the agent's observation space following two main principles. First, we maintain the parsimonious sites, namely 62, to limit the effect of the curse of dimensionality. Secondly, we only included elements which can be measured or estimated on a simulated or physical humanoid robot. In particular, we included joint positions and velocities, base height and orientation, center of mass velocity, feet contact configuration, feet positions, and feet center of pressure forces. Regarding the action space, the policy outputs 23 desired joint velocities rather than joint positions. This prevents target joint position from being too distant from each other in consecutive steps. 
especially at training onset, this would lead to jumpy references that cannot be tracked by the low-level PID controllers. Desired joint velocities are then integrated and fed as reference joint positions to the PIDs. New actions are produced at 25 Hz by the policy, while the low-level control loop runs at 1 kHz. The reward we employ is a weighted sum of terms that can be categorized as regularizers, steady state and transient terms. Steady state terms are active when the robot is in double support, meaning that both feet are in contact with the ground. They include the postural task, biasing the agent towards a symmetric human-like robot configuration, center of mass projection, center of mass horizontal velocity. The transient terms are active in single or without support and include center of mass vertical velocity, whole body momentum and links in contact, which is penalized if any link beside the feet is in contact with the ground. Also, the transient terms include feet in contact, feet contact forces, which is kept balanced between the feet and feet orientation and feet center of pressure. Finally, the regularization terms penalize high joint velocities and torques. The need for introducing a postural reward term is exemplified in the video on the right, showing an unnatural steady state configuration learned by the policy when this term is excluded. We selected the proximal policy optimization algorithm for training the agent. PPO is a model-free on policy gradient method suitable for continuous observation and action spaces. We selected the parallel implementation of PPO included in the Ray RLLib software library to execute the experiment on high-performance servers and a cluster. We will now show the results of the experimental validation. The agent is trained from random initial states at each rollout, and it is subject to random external forces along all directions applied to the robot base. Domain randomization is applied during training, in particular to link masses, ground friction and control signal delay. Also note that no curriculum learning is employed. As you can see from the top right, Training converges in roughly 20 million samples, corresponding to one week of real-world experience. From the plots, we can notice a consistent growth of reward and episode length with low variance, which is also mirrored by individual reward component strands on the bottom right. We evaluate how the trained agent performs when individual planar forces are applied to the base of the robot in 12 different directions and magnitudes, ranging from 50 to 700 newtons, including widely out of sample magnitudes. We observed excellent success rates for in sample pushes and remarkable robustness to out of sample scenarios. In particular, on the top right, we can see that the agent is always able to recover from pushes up to 300 newtons, while experiencing training forces only up to 200 newtons. Moreover, the agent is also robust to unseen low friction settings, still being able to counteract forces in the training range, as shown in the bottom right. We also evaluate robustness to sequences of external pushes. In this experiment, the robot is subject to pushes with varying time intervals. We then count the number of consecutive counterbalance forces, controlling for force magnitude, push duration and application links. As shown in the box plots on the right, the agent shows good performance and robustness to out-of-sample scenarios, also in this case. In this video, an instance of push recovery is shown, with ICAP successfully recovering from a side push provided by a 4 kg sphere traveling at 1.5 meters per second.
in this second visualization, the policy is able to counteract a severely out of sample planar force. Finally, we show the performance of the policy when recovering from challenging sequences of pushes not experienced during training and applied to various links. Thank you for your kind attention.